A young man named Ioto steps off a train into a downpour of rain. He doesn't have an umbrella, but he doesn't seem to mind getting wet. As Ioto ponders the complexities of life, two girls named Akane and Midori run through the rain towards a tram car. Ioto eventually boards the tram car and watches the rain from the window. Suddenly, a man pushes his way past the passengers his hand glowing. The other passengers panic and move out of their way. The crazy man transforms the glowing light into a blade and threatens one of the passengers. He asks a scared girl if she believes in the divine gate. The crazy man approaches her and explains how the gate works, saying that the three worlds have merged and people have been given abilities. He claims that the divine gate grants wishes. The girl cowers in fear while the man speaks with excitement. One man tries to escape, but the crazy man cuts him down with his glowing blade, reducing him to ash. The crazy man takes the girl hostage until Ioto suddenly appears to stop him. The man identifies Ioto as an adapter and attacks him, but Ioto blocks the attack with a shield of water. The man then tries to cut Ioto with his fiery blade, but Ioto dodges and slashes him with a blade made of water. Akane and Midori, students from the World Council Academy, rush into the tram car and approach Ioto who defeats the crazy man. Suddenly, they are transported into the zone by Notron. Aoto begins to walk away, but Akane, one of the academy students, tells him to stop for violating the driver's regulations. Aoto responds that he doesn't have a driver, but before Akane can reply, Midori reminds them of their priority to save the wounded man's life. Midori calls their headquarters for help, while Aoto walks out of the zone and into the rain. Aoto complains about the rain and recalls the death of his family and his house engulfed in fire. He experiences a moment of stillness and sees a white-haired boy who speaks to him about the Divine Gate and advises him to reach out before running away. At the World Council headquarters, the day's events are reported, and Akane and Midori are praised for apprehending the attacker. They take an elevator and discuss Ioto, believing him to be an adapter. As they leave the elevator and rush to their office, they continue talking about what kind of person Ioto is. Midori wins the race to the office, with Akane breathing heavily and scolding Midori for her love of racing. As they are talking, Midori's pet Metabon appears and shows them footage of Ioto stopping the crazy fire user on the train. They comment on the strange expression on Ioto's face, and Midori wonders if he can see the Divine Gate. Akane tries to persuade Midori to stop obsessing over the Divine Gate, but she remains relentless. Officials of the secret military agency known as the Knights of Rounds review the train attack and discover that the attacker is a demon. They speculate about the reason for the demon's irrational actions. One knight defends the demon, attributing his actions to his nature, but another knight disagrees and insults the defending official. Arthur intervenes and stops the argument with a wave of his hands. He then passes judgment on the demon. Arthur expresses his desire to have a conversation with Ioto, which causes some of the knights to protest, questioning Arthur's interest in him. Arthur explains that he wants Ioto to join the academy, and the knights understand that Ioto is off-limits. Otto sits alone in the cafeteria at school and eats his food, in which he puts some ice. His classmates talk about his weird behavior, and someone insults him by calling him a parent Killer. Otto is unfazed by the gossip amongst his classmates, but his mind flashes back to the fire incident and his parents' death, causing his convictions to waver slightly. Meanwhile, Akane and Midori go to see their masters at school. Akane calls his master a name she does not like, and as a punishment, she sets him on fire. The masters tell Akane and Midori to recruit Ioto to their cause, as he had always rejected Arthur's request to join the academy. Midori is very enthusiastic about meeting Ioto but they find out about his parents' death, which shocks both of them, and Akane has doubts about him. Aoto heads home from school and encounters the water fairy Undine, who tells him she has come to see him on behalf of Arthur. Aoto refuses her request to join the academy, but she tries to convince him. She manages to convince him, and he goes to the World Council headquarters, where he meets with Arthur. Arthur lets Aoto know that he is not concerned about his actions from the morning and gives him a driver that was made for him. Arthur lectures him on the importance of drivers and the potential of Aoto's powers which he claims can surpass that of their opponents. Aoto expresses his disbelief and walks away, but Arthur assures him that he will only share the truth with him, and that he will always be waiting for him. He walks down into the lobby and meets Akane with Midori, who is interested in showing him around. Midori scolds Akane, who blurts out their mission, but he defends himself by saying that there is no point in keeping it a secret. Midori then tries to convince him of the benefits he would receive by joining the academy, but Aoto refuses again and begins to walk away. Midori talks about the Divine Gate, which stops Aoto, but he replies that he has no wish to be granted to him. Akane assures him that he will not be forced, but he is going to support his partner who aims to convince him. Akane mentions the rumor about Aoto being a parent killer, 
and tries to let him know that his view of him is more important than the rumors. However, Aoto responds that he did kill his parents before walking off. Aoto walks around the train station and encounters the strange little boy again, who assures him that he did not kill his parents. The little boy tries to convince him of the true nature of his heart, which Aoto believes is cold but is warm. Aoto has a flashback where his parents praise his brother, Ariton, for his ability while he watches from the shadows. He leaves his family in annoyance and eats his food alone, eventually leaving it for a stray dog. This gesture causes him to display a little psychotic behavior. Ariton speaks to him about his actions and smiles as he insults him. Ariton assures him that he can save him but won't help him, and walks away. Arthur sits in his office and recalls a time when he encountered the Divine Gate and witnessed destruction in the land. He urges Ioto to join him on his way to the other side. Akani had a dream where he searched for his deceased father, and Midori woke him out of concern because he was covered in sweat. He refused her help and walked away, making Midori wonder if his strange behavior was a result of Ioto's speech the last time they met. Arthur sat alone in his office, brooding over his work, when Loki came to offer him some hot tea because Arthur was cold and needed warmth. Loki talked about Arthur's interest in Ioto before leaving him. Ioto feeds two stray cats with bread and milk, then recalls the strange little boy predicting that particular action and advises him to let go of the past. Midori and her friends brought him back to reality, as they had come to take him to the academy, but he refused. Midori comments on his affection for the cats, but he replies that his feelings were fleeting, and Akane scolds him for it. They talked about the philosophy of him helping the cat, and the water fairy gave an opinion that broke Aoto's composure. He became willing to consider the academy, and Midori advised him to pursue that belief, as she recalled something from her past. Akane walked out of the group impatiently, and Midori tried to call him back. She explained Akane's actions to Aoto, who was unenthusiastic about her explanation. Akane walked around the street while Metabon scolded him for his quick temper, but he defended himself. They talked about Aoto's underdeveloped area, with Akane showing concern for the citizens of the area, but Metabon explained the situation to him. He shared memories of his dad, who was a powerful figure in their world, and controlled the council, but had died in an accident. He didn't believe the story about his dad, and sought the Divine Gate to find out the truth. Midori continued to defend Akane's behavior, and Aoto replied that Akane would never understand him with such behavior. Midori spoke to him calmly, trying to boost his optimism, and the water fairy added to the advice before they walked away. The strange little boy appeared again and advised him to go after them, but Aoto did not want to get closer to the students. Akane walked down the street and encountered a beggar. He was about to give the beggar some change when he recalled his statement to Aoto about only helping fleetingly. He then asked the beggar about his parents, and the boy replied that they were both too busy to attend to him. Akane was at a loss for words when Aoto appeared behind him, to the delight of the little boy. The boy ran towards Ioto and asked for bread. Ioto took him to get some for him, and Akane criticized Ioto, wondering if he had the fleeting feeling of kindness again. Ioto scolded Akane because he had the same plan to help the little beggar, then explained the difficulties some families face in supporting their children. Akane was shocked at the depth of depravity the street was in, while the little beggar anticipated his bread. Akane wanted to go find the boy's parents, but Ioto tried to dissuade him. Just then, a World Council patrol android powered by a driver passed by and a assured the citizens of the area that they were safe. Akane commented on it, and just then, the android shut down, shocking Akane. Loki took command of the android to test Aoto's metal. The android turned towards the boys and transformed its hands into a drill. It threw it at the boys, but they dodged it. The drill weapon returned to the android, and it started wreaking havoc in the area. The little beggar cried in fear, but Ioto assured him of his protection, and Akane reported the attack to the World Council. The operator denied the malfunctioning of any driver robot, but then Akane showed the operator footage of the attack, and she promised to send help. Akane thinks of a way to stop the rampaging android, and the little beggar runs away from Ioto's protection in fear. As Ioto and Akane move to follow him, the android launches another attack, collapsing a building and creating an obstacle for the boys. While both boys think of how to save the little boy, cries can be heard from the other place. Just then, the boy's father appears and calls to him. However, the father collapses in fear, unable to go help his son due to a flashback that upsets him. Akane scolds the father, but Ioto informs him that the father is also injured and unable to assist. The operators generate a Notron Zone to isolate the attack from the rest of the public, and Midori joins the boys to take down the android driver. Akane tells Ayoto to stop the fire, but he protests. Akane then brings out Ayoto's driver given to him by Arthur. Ayoto takes the driver and runs off, while Midori transforms her driver into a staff 
and Akane transforms into a gauntlet. They attack the android simultaneously and destroy it. Hyoto presses his driver, and a sword appears. He closes his eyes and slashes diagonally with the sword, resulting in a heavy downpour of rain that quenches the fire. Akane and Midori leave the Notron Zone and carry Hiroto to safety. Akane then turns to the boy's father to berate him for ignoring his son, but Aoto explains why the man was unable to save the boy. The man had been overwhelmed by his subconscious filled with fear. He tells Akane about his own experience in a similar situation. Meanwhile, Hiroto regains consciousness and calls his father, who is relieved to see his son safe and sound. Aoto emphasizes the importance of being able to save someone when you want to, and Midori recalls a memory of Elena leaving her and admitting her weakness in being unable to help sometimes. The boy's father apologizes to Hiroto for being unable to save him, but Hiroto refuses to go to his father. Akane becomes emotional and orders Hiroto to go take his father's hands, or else he'll never have another chance. Still, Hiroto refuses to go. Then Aoto speaks gently to him, and Hiroto finally goes to his father and cries in his arms. Loki watches the entire thing with excitement, while Aoto converses with the strange little boy who always appears to him. The strange little boy tells him that he is pure in subconscious and consciousness, despite experiencing betrayal that affected his decision-making. He speaks to Aoto about his fears of loved ones leaving him behind, reminding him that his younger brother was the same. Aoto has a flashback to when he was younger, and Ariton had just killed their parents. He enters their home to see their bodies and shivers in fear. His younger brother smiles at the freedom he feels from their parents' death and starts walking away. Ioto runs after Ariton and holds his hands, leading them to experience the Divine Gate. Ariton asks Ioto if he saw it too, but Ioto does not. Unknowingly, Ioto uses his water ability to hurt Ariton, who retreats from him in fear. Ariton tells Ioto that they have to stay away from each other before walking away. Arthur dismisses Triss, his subordinate before going to crash on a couch. Santa Claus then comes to put a crown on Arthur's head. Arthur asks about the gift, but Santa Claus wishes him a Merry Christmas before walking away. Later, Arthur commends Ioto for deciding to join the Academy. Ioto attributes his decision to the annoyance of Midori and Akane, but Akane scoffs, telling him that he decided on his own. Arthur informs them that he received a gift from Santa Claus, a key that will lead them to the Divine Gate and open it. The three children eagerly anticipate going to the gate, and Arthur assures them that they will be able to open it. Ioto contemplates meeting Ariton again, because he wants to hold his hand. Midori had a dream of when she was younger and had gone to a festival with her friend Elena. She, Oz appears in Arth to do some groundwork. Arthur tells them to do whatever they like, and Loki asks if it is going to be a challenge. Oz scolds Loki for his behavior, before asking Arthur about his intentions with the gate. Arthur replies that he intends to do whatever he likes, and Oz tells him that he will support him with his magic as long as he intends to help the weak. Arthur tells the duo that they will be spectators, which excites Loki even more for the invitation. Arthur walks down the corridor wheel. Meanwhile, Midori spars with Gingist as some of the students, including Aoto, watch. The strange little boy stands with Aoto, although Aoto alone can see the boy and talk to him about Midori as she fights with Ginj, and another says that too strong a belief in a cause binds one's heart. That night, the students hold a feast to welcome Ayoto to the academy, but Ayoto just stares without motivation. Midori offers Ayoto some chicken, but he rejects it as he does not eat warm food. The strange little boy appears to him again and scolds him for his rejection of warmth. Ayoto breaks out of his thoughts when he hears a crash as a student drops her plate. Midori takes her leave of him to go help the student. One of the students goes to Aoto to ask his reason for looking for the gate, but Aoto does not say anything. The student insists that Aoto share his reason. He is about to talk when suddenly Midori screams her reason. She says she wants to know the truth and everybody looks at her. She apologizes and declares that she will reach the gate before everyone else. But Yukari, one of the students, says that Midori will fall before she reaches the gate, making all the students laugh at the image. Later, after most of the students have gone home, Akane helps Midori clean the venue of the feast and also mocks her for losing to a rule she set up for a game of rock-paper-scissors. She had said that the loser would clean the venue, and she lost. He corrects her as she is making mistakes with the way she is cleaning, and she tells him that he should have gone home with everyone else. She is annoyed that she did not suggest that they should race. She is confident she would have won the race and become number one. Akane comments on why she said number one, and she becomes silent as she thinks back to an event in the past. Elena is waiting for her, and as she is about to reach Elena, she trips, but Elena catches her before she falls. They walk to school together, but Midori meets some other students in school and becomes friends with them as well. She joins the new girls in whatever activity they want to do while Elena watches from the shadows. The new friends discuss an upcoming event, and Midori asks if she can bring her friend along. 
but they do not believe Midori's friend would want to hang out with them. Midori defends Elena while Elena listens from the shadows. Later, Midori tells Elena about the event, but Elena is not enthusiastic about becoming friends with the other girls. She says that Midori is the only friend she needs, and she would prefer if she is Midori's only friend. She wishes they would remain together forever because they need each other. Midori does not accept her proposal, and Elena runs away broken and in tears. Midori texts Elena when she gets home to make up for earlier, and Elena tells her she is going to get her wish granted. Later, Midori goes to the summer festival with her new friends, but a news alert about a missing girl causes her to run off searching for Elena. She gets to the mountain where Elena was reported missing, and receives a notification from Elena who says she is going to the gate and she needs only one friend. Midori had shared the story with Akane, and added that she believes Elena is at the gate. Aoto had been listening in on their discussion from the shadows. The Knights of Round meet, and the leader, Arthur, shares his plans of setting out to search for the gate with them. Many of the knights pledge their support, but one of them, Lance, is unhappy with Santa Claus out of season present, and claims it is bad news before walking off. Triss mentions that he will come back, and Arthur replies that he knows he will. Ioto runs a lap around the racetrack at the academy, before the strange little boy appears again, and speaks to him about his hesitation to set out for the gate. Ayoto says that he has no wish and does not want to go to the gate, but the boy replies that the heart does not lie. Akane and Midori watch Ayoto and wonder who he is talking to, as they cannot see the strange little boy. Midori goes to a computer terminal to research Ayoto's past and figure out some way to help him, but she does not have access to view the information. The Knights of the Round observe the development of a driver, with their scientists sharing its strengths and capabilities with the Council. Lance is angry that they have to rely on autonomous drivers to save the King. He adds that the Knights are capable of protecting Arthur before walking off. Arthur then asks about Brunor, whom he calls Shorty, and is told that Brunor is sick. Aoto walks around the academy and notices a surveillance drone tailing him. The person doing the surveillance is Brunor, who wants evidence that proves Aoto killed his father. Aoto meets with Midori and Akan, who want to know if he is involved with the authorities. They tell him about the restricted access to his information. He gets angry that they are trying to investigate him. Midori tries to pacify him, and Aani explains that they do not care about his past, but are interested in helping him in the present. Midori diffuses the heated moment by telling Aoto about a platform she uses to share things that are difficult to talk about. Aoto declines, saying he does not know what to write about before walking away from them. Midori and Akane wonder why Aoto's information is classified. Then she receives a message from someone who says he can help her access classified information. Akane becomes worried that someone is eavesdropping on them and advises Midori not to respond to the message, but she already does. The only way to access the restricted information is to use the authorized pass from one of the teachers at the academy. They then go to their teacher Undine's room and see the pass card on the table. As Midori reaches for it, Undine comes into the room, startling both children, and Akane starts mumbling. Midori quickly thinks up a way to get them out of the situation and gives the teacher a gift, which distracts her from the truth. Later, Akane and Midori use the pass to access Ayoto's information and find information about the blue Christmas fire incident that happened sometime in the past. They discovered that the incident was not as it was reported to the public. However, their accessing of the information alerts Bronor, who thinks it was accessed by Undine. Loki receives a call and is told that Schrodinger, a researcher, is missing. Akane and Midori find out more about the Blue Christmas incident and wonder if the Council covered up the incident. They find the identity of the sole survivor of the incident, a girl named Ruri. Ruri had testified that one of the murderers used a blade made of water, making Akane wonder if it was Auto. Midori asks who the other murderer is and tries to access a secret file but is barred. Just then, several autonomous drivers surround them, and Brunor appears. He scolds them for their actions. But Midori angers him by asking if he is a child. Akane tells her that he is part of Arthur's private unit the Knights of the Round. Brunor says he will tell them what they want to know about the incident. Meanwhile, Schrodinger had infiltrated Brunor's secret room and taken over the surveillance driver. He contacts Ioto and sends him a message about the Blue Christmas incident, which upsets Ioto. He goes to the place where the incident took place, while Schrodinger thinks back on the incident. He had been at the mall to get something for Christmas when suddenly there was a blackout. Ioto had appeared unexpectedly and after a little speech about the imperfection of the world, started killing everyone at the mall. He used ice to block the people from escaping and continued his killing spree. Schrodinger had seen beauty in the killing spree and wanted to join Aoto, but Aoto cut him in his mouth first before allowing him to join him in his killing spree. Brunor recounts the incident to Akane and Midori, assuring them that he will find out the truth about his father's death. 
His father had gone to get him a Christmas present, and when the attack happened, he had hidden from Aoto. However, when Aoto discovered that Ruri was still alive, Brunor's dad came out of hiding and attacked Aoto. Unfortunately, Schrodinger killed him before he could reach Aoto. Midori wonders if Aoto committed the murders, but Brunor is certain that he did not as he had asked his father about it on the day of the incident. His father had told him that a boy with blue eyes had committed the murders before passing away. He also mentioned that he was saved by Arthur from the explosion after the killings, and had found Aoto. However, Brunor still needs evidence to prove Aoto's innocence. Akani refuses to help, but Midori says she will, as she intends to prove Aoto's innocence. Brunor tries to locate Aoto, but is shocked to find that the surveillance he placed on Aoto is gone. Midori helps and uses an app to locate him. They see that he is at the ruins of the Blue Christmas incident and head there immediately. Meanwhile, Aoto meets Schrodinger who is glad to see him. Schrodinger tells him how he had been captured after the incident and locked away in a lab. He comments on the change in Aoto, when suddenly Brunor jumps into their midst. Aoto and Schrodinger jump away from the attack. Akani and Midori appear beside Aoto and ask if he is okay, while Schrodinger comments on Brunor's interruption. Brunor identifies Schrodinger as one of the geniuses of the Divine, and Midori wonders if he was the one who sent the message. Brunor demands an explanation and prepares to attack Schrodinger, but Schrodinger suddenly takes control of Brunor's autonomous drivers. He then sends the autonomous drivers towards Brunor, who destroys a few and asks Akani and Midori to join the fight. The Oto attacks Schrodinger with his sword, and asks about the perpetrator of the incident, and Schrodinger figures out that Ioto is different from the person at the time of the incident. Brunor attacks both of them, but Ioto blocks it, and saves Brunor from Schrodinger's sneak attack. Schrodinger then calls forth Samidare, an autonomous driver. He wakes her up and orders her to kill everyone. Ioto and Brunor face Samidare, standing against her relentless assault while Schrodinger watches from a safe place. Ioto and Brunor prove they are more than a match for Samidare as they defeat her. Meanwhile, Akani and Midori also also destroy all the autonomous drivers sent against them. Aoto asks Schrodinger about the other Aoto, but Schrodinger does not share any information and walks away. Brunor asks Aoto who he was asking Schrodinger about, and Aoto confesses that he is the one who committed the crime. However, Brunor shuts him down for lying and adds that he will leave the matter alone until later. The children wonder what Samadar is when Samadar wakes up and calls Aoto master. Midori then pressures Aoto to post a picture of him and Samadar on the online platform for for friends that she told him about. Undine comments on the post, and Ioto smiles, causing Akana and Midori to tease him about it. Aoto's brother watches as Araton is teased by Akana and Midori and mentions that Aoto has made some friends. The students of the academy head to an abandoned district for training. Akani wonders what the place is like, and Metabon appears to tell them what it is. It is a place outside the management of the World Council. They disembark from the train and Midori gawks at the scenery. She says that the region is prettier than she expected, and Aoto adds that the place has more to it. Akane asks why the students would be training without their advisors, and Midori asks if he is afraid. Ginji, who is a user of nothingness made into blades that can slash everything and even himself, appears and provokes Akane. But Midori gets between them before it escalates. Hikari, a very jovial student whose smile influences her power, joins the others and greets Midori, who is glad to see her, and Yukari. Yukari, a lover of darkness, tells Aoto that she can see darkness in him and asks if he dislikes the environment. But he replies that he feels neither like nor dislike for it. The students see a lady wearing a mask who welcomes them, but they walk away from her because she looks ridiculous. The lady then mentions their mission, which makes them pause. She removes the masks and introduces herself as Bedivere, a member of the Knights of the Round. Bedivere recalls Ewain, another knight tricking her into wearing the mask. He had told her that the students would recognize her as a knight of the round if she wore the masks, and the image had seemed tantalizing to her at the moment. But as she recalls the treatment of the students as a result of the mask, she weeps in pain. The students look at her and wonder if she is okay. But then she regains her composure and gives the students the instructions they are to follow for the training. Bedivere has the students break up into two teams, with Akane, Midori, and Ioto on one team, and the others on the other team. As Akane's team walks through the forest, they wonder how they would go about the training. Akan pledges not to lose to Ginji's team. They reach a checkpoint to find Brunor waiting for them. Their first checkpoint is to defeat Palamedes, an old man they saw standing with Brunor. Akan decides to go against the happy Palamedes, and they begin to wrestle. Midori concludes that they will become friends and turns to see Aoto preparing to join them. They move to the next checkpoint, where they have to answer a trick question. Akan chooses wrongly and falls into a trough of mud, while Aoto chooses the right answer. Later, 
Akane washes at a stream and wonders what the training is all about. He recalls his father leaving home and never returning. A sound breaks his concentration, and he turns to see a girl watching him from a tree. The suddenness makes the girl fall from the tree, and when Akane stands to help her, he falls into the stream. Akane and the girl begin to talk while he wrings water out of his clothes. She asks about their mission to the abandoned district, and he tells her that he is not so sure about what they are supposed to do. She asks about his necklace and wonders if he can give it to her, but he declines, as it is too precious to him. The girl advises him to be happy, as he has something precious to call his own. Just then, Midori calls Akane as they look for him, but the girl disappears before Midori and Ioto reach him. Arthur and the Knights of Round have been watching the children through surveillance. Lancelot is against the method used by the girl, but Arthur replies that battles do not solve everything. Triss says that everything done is to reach the gate, and Arthur agrees. Akane's team reaches the last checkpoint, and Bedivere tells them to freshen up, along with Ginji's team. Ioto notices that Akane is quite moody, and asks him about it, but Akane does not want to share. Ioto insists, and Akane tells him about the girl he saw in the woods, but he does not give details. Later, the children meet with Bedivere, and she asks how the training was. They do not understand the point of the training, but Bedivere gives nothing away and tells them to be ready for the next mission, which is to get back to the station. On the way back to the station, they encounter some men who have turned into beasts and attack them. Hikari explains that these beastmen are the Seconds, individuals who have crossed the species barrier to gain power and access the Holy Gate. The children are confused because the Seconds do not typically attack people on a regular day, but they are prepared to defend themselves. Akane tells the group that their mission is to reach the station, so they all head in that direction. However, he stops when he hears something in the darkness. Suddenly, the girl he had met earlier emerges from the darkness and attacks him. He is confused, but he defends himself as best as he can. The girl explains explains that her colleagues had witnessed her speaking to Akan, so she is obligated to follow the community's rules to eliminate intruders. She reveals that they were originally humans, but now live in hiding defying the World Council. They call themselves the Defiers. Meanwhile, Genji and the others confront the Seconds and push them back. Aoto and Midori realize that Akane is not with them and go back to search for him. The Knights of Round observe the battle with interest. They question how the Seconds acquired a driver that they were not supposed to have. Arthur suggests that they probably obtained it from the Grimoire Cult. Triss asks if they should send a rescue team, but Arthur orders them not to, and even instructs Bedivere not to assist the students. Suddenly, Loki appears with Oz, and reprimands Arthur for his plans. Oz tells him that they cannot reach the gate by leaving a trail of dead bodies, and Loki asks if Arthur intends to burden the students with the responsibilities. However, Arthur remains silent and continues to watch the battle between the seconds and the students. Back in the fight, Akane does not want to go on the offensive, causing the girl to increase her attack. The girl transforms into her beast form, but before she can strike Akane, a flood of water thwarts her. Aoto and Midori have arrived to save Akane. The girl teases Akane about his friends coming to his aid, just as her friends appear and surround the trio. Aoto advises Akane to use words to convey his message, as actions alone are not enough. He shares a personal anecdote where his failure to act caused him to lose something important. Akane turns to the girl and speaks to her about his ignorance of others' lives and asks what he can do instead of fighting against them. The girl dismisses him as naive and attempts to attack Akane again. Suddenly Bedivere appears and strikes down the girl. Akane is shocked by her killing, but Bedivere informs him that it was Arthur's command. Bedivere has arrived with some of the knights, and they begin to attack the beastmen. Loki talks to Arthur about the children's choice, which is diplomacy. Arthur inquires about the World Council's decision, but Loki believes it doesn't matter since Arthur has already decided to go to the gate. Loki questions if Arthur is prepared for the responsibilities that come with his decision, and Arthur reassures him that he is fully capable. Akane apologizes to the girl as she bleeds to death, but she is not angry with him as he had no involvement in her demise. She scolds him for getting dirty and tells him that he is kind before passing away. Akane mourns her death and wonders if there was anything he could have done to save her. Aoto comforts him. Arthur had been a lonely boy in Terastia, and had lived in sadness until he encountered a door that led him to Celestia. Santa comes to meet him where he stands lost in Celestia, and when he finds out that Arthur is a human, and has lost something very important to him, he promises to give him a present. Santa's sister, Lisa, finds Santa with a strange boy and asks him about it. He replies that the strange boy, Arthur, is her best friend. 
Arthur reports to the World Council about the Divine Gate and puts the cause of the chaos on the selfishness of the world. Arthur declares that he will do whatever he must to prevent a repeat of Blue Christmas. The World Council wants to know how he intends to achieve his goals, and he lets them know that he has gathered adapters with whom he would go on the expedition to the gate. They comment on his obsession with the gate, but promise not to interfere in his dreams. Oz and Loki watch Arthur's meeting with the World Council and wonder what Arthur is planning. Arthur shares his plans with the Knights of Rounds, and they all approve. But Lancelot asks what Arthur intends to do once he reaches the gate. Arthur declares that he is going to return the world to its correct state and get the Holy Divine to rebuild the world. Midori wins a race between her, Akane, and Ioto. Bronor appears and tells them they are to report to Arthur as he wants to talk to them. They wonder why, and Brunor tells them that the Knight of Round is going to claim the Divine Gate. The children want to know if Arthur plans to take them along, and Brunor says to ask Arthur himself. They decide to go see him, and then ask him. As they move, the strange little boy appears before Ioto and asks if he has decided on his wish. Ioto replies that he doesn't believe it, but he will still go on. The boy tells him of the pain that awaits him and asks if he intends to change the past or the future. Arthur uses a fish tank to get the children's philosophical opinion, and then adds that there are several opinions in the world. He suddenly asks them to join him on his expedition to the Divine Gate. He tells them of the others that would be joining him on the expedition, and Akani wonders if they would truly get to the gate. Arthur reprimands him for his disbelief and tells the children that only those who believe would get to the gate. Ioto wonders if one is unsure about going, and Arthur assures him that the doubts would clear. He tells them that he only has one wish, and that is to claim the gate. Oz is appalled at Arthur's brazen plan, but Loki is unfazed and glad for the help. Oz wants to know how Arthur intends to remake the world, and Loki tells him to do whatever he likes if he doesn't trust Arthur. Oz walks away, saying that he intends to do whatever he likes, and Loki recalls the first time he met Arthur. He had introduced himself to the young Arthur as a god, and asked if Arthur wants to be a god. Arthur had replied that he wants to be king of the world. Arthur explained that he would be a king who would bring peace to the world so that his best friend could bring happiness to the world. Loki told Arthur that he would be a god to him as Arthur would be a king to the world. Loki goes to his secret base and announces to his workers that the time has arrived. Oz, on the other hand, prepares his subordinates for the expedition to the Divine Gate. Akane, Midori, and Ioto contemplate joining Arthur on his expedition and recall the words of Arthur when he said he intends to become king and rule the world, then have his friend bring happiness to the world. This excites Midori, and she pledges her support, but Akane is not convinced. Akane wonders if only the wise of the first person to the gate will be granted, but their advisor assures them that the wishes of everyone who gets to the gate will be granted. The advisors explain that just as there are several wishes in the world, as there are humans, it is the reason the world fell into chaos. The advisors wish their students well before they go to join the assembly of adapters that Arthur has summoned. Arthur introduces everyone to Loki and Oz. The students are shocked to find Loki friendly, even though he is a god from Ragnatia, and Oz is from Dragtia, a kingdom of dragons. His reserved demeanor made Akane view him as suspicious, while Genji recalls a meeting he had with Loki. After the meeting with Arthur, Midori runs a lap around the racetrack thinking about Elena, while Akane watches her from a platform. Metabon teases Akane about his moody state, and Akane says his thoughts are on his dad. Aoto, on the other hand, converses with the strange little boy who is glad that Ayoto has decided to have a wish. Just then, Undine appears, and he calls her name, which makes her happy. She says it is because he has opened up to her, as friends do, and now she can do anything for him. She then tells him that Arthur would like to see him alone. Arthur tells Ioto that he lied about the philosophy he shared when Ioto and his friends came to see him. Arthur speaks about how similar he and Ioto are because of the precious thing they have lost, and then he tells him of his relationship with Santa and how he intends to help him bring happiness back to the world. Ioto tells him that his wish seems selfish, even though it is for someone else. And Arthur says the same can be said of Ioto, who is sacrificing himself for somebody else. Arthur then mentions how Ioto has been protecting Araton by taking the fall for all his wrongdoings. He advises him about getting stronger if he wants to protect something very important to him. Loki asks Arthur about his commitment to going to the Divine Gate and Arthur assures him that no god can stand in his way. He then asks Loki if he intends to stand in his way, but Loki replies by asking Arthur about his intentions once he reaches the gate. Arthur whispers his answer before walking away. Arthur is leading his Knights of the Round and the students from the Academy to the Divine Gate. Before they depart, he gives a speech, explaining that he intends to destroy the gate when they reach it. He emphasizes that the peace they see in the city is an illusion, 
and that the world they live in is understood only by the rulers, who have been covering up their dirty secrets. Arthur aims to restore the world to its true state, free from corruption. Notron opens up the path to the gate, and the expedition party moves forward. Triss explains to the students as they pass through a tunnel-like path that they are on the way to the gate, and the zone created by Notron is a result of research to reach the gate. They come across a gate, and the students are excited to see it. However, they are told that the real gate is further down and several gates away. As they walk towards a building, Arthur alerts his knights, telling them to get ready. The knights fall into formation, surprising the students who were not aware of the danger. The knights draw their weapons, and suddenly, several autonomous drivers appear. Loki, who is watching, laughs at their attempt to reach the gate and commands the autonomous drivers to attack the party. The party fights and takes down the autonomous drivers as they run towards a door. Inside, they are greeted by the Norse gods. Oz watches and blames Arthur for his decision to go to the gate, knowing that Oz would have to protect the Divine Gate with the Norse gods. The knights of the round laugh at the idea of going against the gods and wonder if they can defeat them. Unfortunately, they realize that they cannot and decide to buy time for Arthur and the students to proceed towards the gate. Lancelot urges Arthur to go ahead so that he and the others can face the gods and destroy them. Loki, from his monitor, watches the knights battle the gods and confesses to no one that he did not call in the Norse gods. The students complain about the unfairness of the fight, as the knights of the round are no match for the gods. Arthur lets them know that it shows their determination to reach the gate, and Akane asks if Arthur is sacrificing his subordinates. However, before he can answer, one of the gods attacks them, separating Ginji's team from Akane's team, who were closer to Arthur when the attack happened. Gawain, Arthur's daughter, attacks the god that targeted Arthur, but is unable to withstand the god's power and gets struck down. As she falls to the ground, Palamedes catches her and hands her over to Arthur before turning back to face the god. Gawain apologizes for failing her father before passing away. Arthur lays her down and tells his group that they have to keep moving on and not let the efforts of those dying go to waste. The knights continue to face the gods, giving their all, but the gods are just too much for them and they all die one after the other. Triss tries to catch Brunor from falling, but he lets his hand slip out of her grip and falls. Then, Triss faces one of the gods in anger. Lancelot faces one of the gods and questions their stubbornness. The god he faced tells him that they have to deserve the gate and unnerves him by saying that his friend suggested that the gods protect the gate leaving him open to an attack. Oz is unhappy that the Knights of the Round will not retreat but choose to die at the hands of the gods. Lancelot recalls his first meeting with Arthur. He had been bullying someone in the street when he was told to stop by a voice. He asks who, without turning back to see, and is told that it is the king. Arthur beat him into submission, then asked him if the people could not defeat their king. He explained that the people rely on their king just as the king relies on God, and that the people rebel against the king as the king rebels against God. He proclaims that he will kill God and become king, then tells Lancelot to come kill the king. Lancelot assures him that he will kill him, and Arthur replies that he will remain alive until then. The memory keeps Lancelot in the fight with the gods, and he refuses to die. Arthur meets a wounded Triss on his way, but she sends his group on their way before dying. Midori weeps that everyone is dying and asks why Arthur has to go that far. He replies that he has to bear the sin of changing the world and that their sacrifice should not be in vain. Then he urges the children onwards. Loki completes his preparations and wishes Arthur had saved his best for last. Meanwhile, Arthur and Akane group had gotten to the last gate before the Divine Gate. The gate gave way to Arthur's sword, and he passed through. But as the children try to pass, a force holds them down. Arthur struggles through the force, weighing him down, remembering his friends and his daughter whom he had lost in the quest to reach the Divine Gate. Lancelot commends Brunor for his job in helping Arthur along with his plan to reach the gate before Brunor dies in his arms. Lancelot then turns to face the gods one more time. The gods tell him something that doesn't add up, and he asks that they explain, but they do not, and disappear. Arthur stands before the Divine Gate, and the gate opens. But before he can do anything, he's attacked by an autonomous driver. They fall behind the gate, and the gate closes. The force holding a cane and his group down also disappears, and they run towards the gate hoping it would open for them as well. The autonomous driver uses the powers of all of the knights of the round. This angers Arthur, and they attack relentlessly. Outside the divine gate, Akani and the others try to open the gate using their abilities to no avail. Lancelot meets them, struggling to open the gate. Arthur finally takes down the driver, and then Loki appears. Loki teases him about his plans to destroy the gate but is sad that he is unable to achieve his goal. Loki offers him a proposition to either be his king by touching his sword or to die on the spot. Arthur refuses the proposition, 
and Loki promises to get a better king, but leaves his sword on the ground in case he changes his mind. Arthur picks up Loki's sword, and some dark energy seeps into him from it. Lancelot and the children await the return of the king, confident that he will not lose his life beyond the gate. Suddenly the gate opens, and they see Arthur. Lancelot goes to him, but Arthur stabs him in the guts. This transforms Arthur, changing his looks, and he weeps blood as Lancelot dies. The children run towards Lancelot to help him, but then the ground gives way, and they fall into the darkness. Long ago, humans aspired to be more than they were, and the gods punished them. Arthur has tried to do so again, and has fallen into darkness, his mind imprisoned. Loki appears before his consciousness and teases him, reminding him of the events that led to his current state. Outside of his mind, Loki continues to tease Arthur for his aspirations, but also reminds him that he granted his wish to become king. As a result of Arthur's actions, the World Council becomes strict with its citizens. A curfew is imposed on the city, and citizens are instructed to refrain from staying outdoors after 8 p.m. Meanwhile, Oz reports to the Six Saints about Arthur's actions. He explains that Arthur had planned a coup d'etat and he had tried to stop him. Oz is questioned by the World Council, who informs him that he lacks the authority to decide to stop Arthur, and they request Loki. Just then, Loki appears and announces that Arthur and the Knights of the Round are all dead. Later, Oz asks Loki if he is telling the truth about Arthur's death and Loki evades the question. Oz insists on an answer, and Loki reminds him that they both conspired against the Six Saints. He informs Oz that they are in the same boat and questions why Oz is fidgeting. However, Oz is concerned about the students from the Academy. Loki then reveals to him that they were killed by the Norse gods that Oz released, and teases Oz about pretending to be a good person. The students' advisors sneak around and meet up with the students in a secret location. Midori cannot help but hug them, and Metabon appears and teases Akani. Ayoto, the serious one, wants to know what is happening in the city, and discovers that the World Council has suppressed information about the expedition to the tower. The public is unaware of what happened, but the World Council is keeping an eye out for the students. The advisors provide the students with medicine to treat Hikari who is wounded, and quickly leave, as they fear the council may begin to suspect them. The students summon Santa Claus, who was hiding in an inner room during the advisor's visit, and ask for his advice. He tells them to lay low. They discuss the Divine Gate incident, and Genji asks if Akani's group truly witnessed Arthur killing Lancelot. They confirmed it, and also mentioned that Loki was present. They are unsure about the truth, and Santa advises them not to trust Loki either, to which Yukari readily agrees. However, Hikari reminds her that Santa Claus saved them when they were surrounded by thousands of autonomous drivers, unable to run due to her injuries. Santa destroyed the autonomous drivers and created a path for them to escape to safety. Genji thanks Santa for his help, but wants to know the reason why he chose to save them. Santa tells them it's because of the promise he made to Arthur. He recalls a time when Arthur was younger and took him and his sister Lisa to witness the sunrise over a river. Loki enters his secret base and congratulates his lackeys, informing them that they are preparing for another showdown. He taps a man on the shoulder, revealing that it is a Kane's dad, who has been missing for a long time. Loki then introduces the lackeys to a girl named Shakespeare who wishes to be entertained. He assures her that he has a tragedy that she will love, and she eagerly awaits it. Oz is moody over his choice to join Loki in going against the Six Saints. Dorothy, his subordinate, expresses her concern, but Oz refuses to be consoled as he believes that he has caused the deaths of some children. Dorothy is shocked when she discovers that one of them is Midori. Santa speaks with the children about the event of Blue Christmas. He tells them that the Council has hidden the truth from even Arthur. The Council had kept the truth about Elena, Akana's dad, and even those in Ginji's team. The children are flabbergasted and quiz Santa, but he is also ignorant of the truth thanks to Loki. Santa had tricked Loki's movement and had discovered that Loki controlled the council in league with the geniuses of the divine. The children find the story hard to believe and want to know Loki's goal. Santa tells them that it is probably to renew the world. Santa tells them how Loki loves watching people struggle to reach the divine gate and has stopped Arthur from destroying the gate. Hikari asks Santa about his plans for the future, and he replies that the one who reaches the gate will decide what to do with the world. He declares that he is going to save Santa and asks that they help him. They get over the shock of the request to go back to the gate and ask why he wants them. Santa answers that Arthur chose them. The strange little boy appears to Ioto again and berates him for his indecision. He tries to encourage him to decide what he wants, whether it is to change the past or the future. Ioto is unsure of which to change and the boy commends him for making a choice. Just then, Genji comes to call him for a meeting. Genji announces that he is going back to the council and is backed by Yukari and Hikari. Midori protests their decision and they defend their choice stating that they do not trust Santa. Aoto reminds them that they would be viewed as accomplices of Arthur, but Genji argues against that. 
He proposes that they go confirm the truth of their accusation from the council, but Akane suggests that they go back to the Divine Gate. Genji reminds him of the death of the Knights of the Round, but Akane is determined to go as he wishes to see the world that Arthur wants to rebuild and wants to know the truth about his father's death. Midori joins and says that Elena awaits her beyond the gate. Genji asks Aoto about his choice, and Aoto says he wants to know why Ariton killed their parents when they were younger. Genji and his group leave the room after saying their farewells and promising not to sell them out, while Santa listens in from the shadows. Loki interrogates Genji after being unable to get anything from Yukari and Hikari. Loki tries to manipulate Genji into giving them up, and Genji eventually does. They go to the hideout but do not find Akani and his group. As it turns out, Santa had tampered with their memory. It is a trick he uses on children who see him bringing gifts to their houses. They wonder if they have been betrayed, but Santa says they could have been threatened. Loki asks Genji what he intends to do, and Genji says he has a plan. Genji then tricks their advisors into revealing the location of Santa and Akane's group. He goes to the advisors and tells them that the council has discovered Santa's group and that they should try to save them. The advisors run to the location to alert Santa's group, and they realize that they have fallen for Genji's trap. Just then, Notron teleports them into the zone, and Loki surrounds the hideout with autonomous drivers. Genji advises Akan and Ko to come out in peace or go their own way. Santa then asks the children if they are determined to go through with the plan or go back to the council. The children declare that they are seeing it through, and Santa goes to stop the autonomous drivers from attacking the house. He destroys the autonomous drivers while Akane and his group escape through an underground passage including the advisors. Notron cancels the zone, and Genji's group worries about the safety of Akani's group. Loki goes to meet Shakespeare and tells her to start the tragedy play. She writes with her magic pen, and there is a bright light that swallows Akani's group inside the tunnel. The advisors panic as they cannot find the children. Shakespeare is a girl who wields a divine pen with which she can shape human life. As she writes, Loki influences her to create tragedies for Arthur. She uses her magical pen to transform the people's love for Arthur into hatred and adds that he gains immortality but is consumed by darkness. Akane Midori and Ioto find themselves in a strange place where they are chased by autonomous drivers. They wonder where they are when they suddenly hear Loki's voice. Akane demands Loki to reveal himself, and he replies that he looks forward to meeting them. A hole opens up in the ground, and they are engulfed by darkness. Loki and Shakespeare gleefully continue to plot and twist more tragedies for the children, with Loki striving to make them experience the utmost despair. The children are separated by Shakespeare's magic and find themselves in different theaters. The audience starts clapping for the children, and a con, frustrated with the strange occurrences, tells Loki to stop. Loki attempts to walk away but realizes he is blocked by a magical force. Loki asks Shakespeare if she has something interesting in mind for them, and she uses her magic to introduce three characters for each child, Hamlet for Aoto, Macbeth for Midori, and Othello for Akane. The children wonder who these new characters are. Loki requests further details on how he wants the story to unfold, and Shakespeare complains about his increasing demands. Nonetheless, she agrees to make it more intriguing and employs her magic to twist their stories. The children are enveloped by darkness, and when the lights come back on, they have transformed. Akane finds himself in the body of a girl. He retains his mind, but cannot control the girl's body. Midori becomes an assassin who was captured before she could assassinate a tyrant, and Aoto becomes a sickly child on the brink of death, anxiously waiting for the last leaf on a tree to fall. Akan laments to no one in particular that he cannot control his body. Shakespeare makes Akan fall in love with his father, but one day, things take a turn for the worse when his father brings home some women. Akani's life is upended as he endures mistreatment at the hands of his father's mistresses. Metabon watches as Akani suffers, but he too is imprisoned and unable to intervene. Midori and Aoto continue to suffer in isolation, while Akane begins to hope for a better life after receiving a letter stating that the prince is holding a ball to find a bride. Akan's character weeps at the thought of being unable to attend the ball because he does not have a garment. Suddenly, a wizard appears to assist Akane. Loki voices his displeasure with Shakespeare's choice of wizards, claiming they are mundane. Shakespeare accidentally drops her magical pen, causing the magic to cease temporarily. Akane briefly regains control and realizes that the wizard is his father. However, the moment is short-lived. As Shakespeare picks up her pen again, and Akane finds himself at the ball, being approached by the prince for a dance. Loki continues to interrupt Shakespeare, causing the magic to fluctuate and affecting the characters under her control. Shakespeare makes Midori run endlessly, prompting Loki to express his boredom. She drops her pen once more. Akane and his father regain control of their lives and attempt to run away, 
but their freedom is short-lived. Loki influences Shakespeare to further twist the stories of the three children. Ioto flees from his sick bed, leaving his brother behind. Loki and Shakespeare comment on Ioto's actions, commending him for his convincing performance. Akane seeks refuge in a presumed safe place with his father, then lashes out and punches him for abandoning Akane and his mother. Midori continues running until she hears a familiar voice that stops her in her tracks. She turns around to see her friend, Elena, but Elena quickly runs off and Midori gives chase. Ioto goes to his old house and reminisces, and Ariton joins him in the rain. Akane and his dad also visit the past and see their younger selves playing catch with each other. Akane's dad suggests that they play catch as they used to do. Midori falls as she runs towards Elena, and Elena comes back to help her up. She tells Elena that she has been looking for her, and Elena apologizes for leaving her in the past. Elena proclaims that Midori is her only friend, apologizes for her selfishness, and they weep together. Midori tries to blame herself, but Elena does not let her, and says that they should enjoy the moment. Midori agrees with Elena that once she is with her, she does not need any other thing or a friend, and they hold each other as they cry. Ariton speaks to Aoto about his past and what he has been up to since leaving their parents' house. He tells him that he is sorry for the abuse he endured at the hands of their parents, and that they understand each other. He speaks of many things, but Aoto replies by asking who he is, showing that Aoto does not believe that it is Ariton. Midori tries to apologize to Elena, but Elena says she is the one who should be apologizing for making Midori feel bad all those times. Elena tells Midori that she is is still her number one friend, as she had promised in the past. Midori brings out something that they used to own, but Elena does not recognize it, surprising Midori because Elena is supposed to know what it is. On the other hand, Akane and his dad talk about their dreams, and Akane's dad says his dream was to play catch with Akane. Akane reminds his dad of his research, which he had known for a long time to be his father's true dream, and his father replies that a dream is a dream because it won't come true. Akane's dad had made a mistake that made Akane realize that the man is not truly his dad, and he tells him the truth of how his father could have pursued his dream. The three children realize that they have been tricked, and that the people they were conversing with were the actors Macbeth, Hamlet, and Othello, written into the play by Shakespeare. Shakespeare is surprised that her play is not going as she had written, and she panics, but Loki assures her that the play is interesting that way. He shows her the real-life people that her actors had played, and tells her that they are coming to continue the work that she has started. She becomes angry, but he puts her to sleep. Loki then transports the children to another place where he says that they will be crushed by despair. Loki goes to Arthur's mind and teases him on the nature of humans while Arthur suffers in silence on top of the tower inside the zone. Loki continues to tease Arthur, showing him Santa, who is planning to come and save him. Arthur tells Loki to be careful as things do not always go as planned and that Santa is not an easy person to control. Loki reminds Arthur of the Norse gods and wonders how well Santa would fare in a fight against them. He tries to quench Arthur's hope by telling him that the same gods killed his Knights of the Round, and adds that he awaits the world that Santa hopes to change. Aoto wakes up in a place leading to the Divine Gate and sees a strange little boy. The boy tells him that they are in a tower, and that they must leave or they will be seen by the Norse gods. Akane walks around another place and calls out to Aoto and Midori, but suddenly several autonomous drivers attack him, and he runs for his life. Midori walks around a garden and hears the sound of fighting. She runs towards the sound and bumps into Elena which shocks her. Akane is overwhelmed as he tries to take down the autonomous drivers before his dad appears, and destroys the autonomous drivers attacking him. Akan insults him, thinking he is the fake one like he had seen in the illusion, but his dad shows that he is the actual person by using his power to destroy more of the autonomous drivers that appear. Undyne and the other advisors appear outside the tower where the children are imprisoned. They try to figure out a way to get to them as soon as possible. Midori prepares to fight Elena, as she does not believe that she is real, but Elena prepares to defend herself. Akane faces his dad and asks him to prove that he is real. His dad shares information that makes Akane believe him. His dad then tells him to go back home and refrain from going to the Divine Gate, and that he will speak to the Council on on his behalf. Akan is surprised that his father has dealings with the council, and tells him about the death of Arthur and the Knights of the Round. His father tells him that he played a role in the events of the Gate expedition. Akani's dad then explains how the Divine Gate works to Akani. He tells him how people have lost their lives because of the lack of balance, and that without the Divine Gate things would be worse. He tells him about the zones and the autonomous drivers, 
which are byproducts of the research on the gate, and that the gate should not be destroyed. Akane cuts his dad off and tells him what he has thought of him since he was younger, and what his mom said about him being a great man. He had asked his mom if his dad hated them, but his mom had defended his dad. He scolds his dad for his belief in keeping the gate, and tells him that he is going to the gate to change the world. His dad decides to test his determination, and they fight. Loki watches the event unfolding, and Arthur tries to provoke Loki, and tells him that including the Norse gods in his plans would spoil them. Loki assures him that all is going according to his plans, and that his goal is to make Arthur the king of the world. Genji stands before the World Council, and they scold him for keeping the fact that Ioto, Midori, and Akane are alive from the Council. Genji is unresponsive, and they let him know that he will not be punished for it, but they need his help to stop Loki. They tell him that Celestia and Helistia are on the move against Terastia, and that his friend Hikari has been taken by Celestia, while Yukari has been approached by envoys of Helistia. He wonders why he should be the one and they tell him that they need him to represent Terastia since he is the only human, apart from Hikari and Yukari, who can get to the gate. The envoys of Celestia had come for Hikari while she was in her bed, while Yukari had met the envoys of Helistia while she was on a train. Arthur questions Loki about his plans, and they talk about how Arthur had managed to resist succumbing completely to Loki's control. Meanwhile, Santa searches for something Arthur has hidden from Loki. When he finds it, he is accosted by one of the Norse deities, but he manages to escape by fighting against the Norse god, and unleashing a powerful attack that briefly blocks her view. Oz wants to go search for the missing children but does not find Dorothy where he left her. Dorothy has been engaging in a fight with Midori, who still believes she is the fake Elena. Midori screams that Elena is her one and only friend making Dorothy prove to Midori that she is Elena by bringing out the toy tags they share. Midori apologizes for the past and for doubting her. Elena assures her not to worry about the past, and that she has a new place and comrades now, which disappoints Midori. Elena reminds Midori of what she said in the past, and tells her that she is now known as Dorothy. Dorothy wishes Midori would forget about the past and move on with her life. But as she says her farewell and turns to leave, a Norse god appears. The strange little boy takes Aoto towards the gate and tells him that when Akane and Midori experience despair, they would be transported to his location. Just then, Undine runs up to them and greets Aoto, also indicating that she can see the little boy. She mentions that she has always seen the boy. Meanwhile, Elena and Midori face the Norse god and are beaten so badly they can hardly stand. Midori tells Elena to leave as it is her test, and then she starts running, daring the Norse god to chase after her. Akane and his dad are still battling, with his dad teasing him for his weak attacks. Suddenly, one of the Norse gods appears and threatens them. Akane's dad uses the autonomous drivers to save Akane while he faces the Norse god. He brings out one massive autonomous driver and pushes the Norse god back for a bit, eventually trapping the god. However, the god destroys the massive driver and stabs Akane's dad in the guts. The Norse god thinks he has won but Akane's dad pulls him into a hug and blows them both up while Akane watches from afar. Midori runs to the edge of a cliff, and the Norse god fighting her, believing she is trapped, throws a spear at her. However, Elena jumps in and is struck by the spear. Elena apologizes to Midori and pushes her down into the sea. Akane runs towards the place of the explosion and cries for his father, and Oz appears to find Dorothy dead. Midori weeps in anguish at the death of Elena. Loki tells Arthur that the children have experienced despair, giving them the key they need to open the Divine Gate. Aoto and Undine follow the strange little boy into a room where they meet Ariton, Aoto's brother, who has been waiting for him. When Aoto was younger, he had been mistreated by his parents while his twin brother Ariton was favored. He forgot that it was their birthday because he was never celebrated. Ariton hated him because he never got angry with the ill treatment he got from their parents and never asked for his help. Aoto asked Ariton what he was doing on their path to the gate and Ariton replied that he was guided to the place. Loki provokes Arthur, telling him that the gate chooses those who despair, but Arthur refuses to give up hope and makes Loki aware that as long as there is hope in the world, Loki will not win. Loki shows him the key Santa had given him, and Arthur loses his composure for a moment. The strange little boy meets with Midori and Akane, while Ioto converses with Ariton. The boy shows Midori and Akane Ioto's despair, which he had experienced since the day Ariton killed their parents. He lets them know that they are in the abyss of despair, as well as Ioto, and encourages them to go through the Divine Gate. Ariton reminds Ioto of the past when their parents tortured Ariton to draw out Ioto's power, and did the same to Aoto to draw out Ariton's power. He reminds him of the several attempts of Aoto to protect him by being the bad child and having their parents turn their anger on him. Aoto tells Ariton that he deferred to him all those years because he is better than he is, 
but Ariton would not hear of it and accuses Aoto of experiencing the gate first, but hiding it from him. Ariton explains what it was like to experience the divine gate for the first time, and lets him know that Aoto did not show the signs when he, Ariton, experienced it, and shows that Aoto had seen it before then. Ariton understands Aoto's behavior, even when he takes the blame for setting their house on fire. Ariton had watched their parents beat Aoto for something Ariton had done, and had locked him up. Ariton says Ioto is a hypocrite for everything Ioto did, only making life painful for Ariton. His subconscious had won his consciousness, and his impulse had pushed him to kill their parents. His feelings had pushed him over the edge. He had gone to Ioto's room while he was sleeping and tried to kill him, but even then Ioto's eyes were clear, and Ariton had run out in fear, his despair pushing him to encounter the Divine Gate. Ariton feels looked down upon by Ioto. But Ioto says he only wants to protect Ariton. Ariton accuses him of being selfish and indulging his ego. He tells him that Ioto could have proposed they run away together, but he chose to take on all the problems. Ariton pushes Ioto until the dark consciousness takes over both of them. Ioto tries to convince Ariton that they can go back to being normal, but Ariton scoffs at the idea and brings out his driver. He turns his driver into two swords and prepares to attack Ioto. Just then, the other advisors come into the room, but Undine is too shocked to tell them what has been happening. Ariton launches an attack, but Aoto dodges, saying that he doesn't want to fight. Midori and Akane watch the fight but cannot interfere. Ariton urges Aoto to fight him, but Aoto refuses and keeps dodging Ariton's attacks. Aoto tries to convince Ariton, but Ariton is hell-bent on fighting him, and justifies his previous actions. Ariton attacks again, and Aoto blocks the attack with his sword, but Ariton pushes forward and knocks down Aoto. He raises his sword to finish the job, and Akane screams, but the strange little boy stops him and Midori from joining the fight. The Norse gods watch the events and complain that the children are under the protection of the strange little boy. They decide to head to the gate room, but are intercepted by Oz, who is angry that they hurt his friend Dorothy. He vows to take back the power he has for them, and unleashes a powerful energy that takes away the powers of the gods and then collapses. Ioto continues to evade Ariton's attacks, angering Ariton. He urges Ioto to surrender so that he can set him free, then unleashes a powerful attack. Ioto does not dodge, but Undine gets in between them and is struck by Ariton's sword. Ioto is sad that Undine is struck, but she is glad to have been able to help him. She urges him to look towards the future and passes out. Ariton is angry that someone came between him and Ioto and moves to strike again, but Ioto screams and a powerful shield of water pushes Ariton back. Just then, Midori and Akane run into the room to find Ioto still alive. Ariton is glad that Ioto has been been able to let his impulses take over, and promises to end it the next time they meet before walking away. The advisors tell Aoto to go on towards the gate, as they will care for Undine. She encourages him to move on as well, and the strange little boy appears to encourage him to go on. The door to the divine gate opens for Akane, Midori, and Aoto, and the little boy comes out and welcomes them into the divine gate. He shows them the true form of the divine gate. He explains that the divine gate is a scale that weighs despair against hope, and one's subconsciousness against one's consciousness. Aoto asks the strange little boy who he is, as he has never shared his identity throughout the time he has been appearing to Aoto. The boy answers that he is the key that guides those who have experienced despair toward the divine gate. The boy tells them that they have the power to choose to change the past or the future and they have the right to have come to that stage. Santa Claus thinks back to when he met Arthur, who had mistakenly gotten into Celestia. He sensed that Arthur had lost something, and when Arthur asked if he could get it back, Santa replied that he did not know, but could give him a present. Santa promised to give Arthur a new start, and bring happiness to the world that Arthur protects which is why he has to get Arthur back from Loki. The strange little boy encourages the children to go beyond the Divine Gate, but the children hesitate, although they are eager to go. Loki lets Arthur know that the children have reached the Divine Gate, and he replies that he never doubted their ability. Loki asks why he is hidden in Arthur's mind when Santa is coming for him. And just then, Santa breaks into the throne room, where the puppet Arthur remains still. Santa asks if Arthur cannot remember him and Loki assures him that Arthur has changed. Santa reminds Arthur of something he had told him a long time ago, when Arthur had told him that the World Council had given him a job. Loki tells Santa that Arthur does not love the world as much as people think and that he wants to take revenge on the world. Then Loki launches an attack on Santa, but Santa blocks the ball of energy 
and sends it back towards Loki. Loki swats it away, and they continue fighting while Arthur watches like a doll. The World Council is pissed with Loki's betrayal and the threat of the three children at the Divine Gate, so they decide to send someone to stop them. Meanwhile, Loki continues to provoke Santa. Santa decides to head for Arthur, but when he gets before him, Arthur stabs him. Santa is glad that they have finally connected and reaches into Arthur's consciousness to speak to him. He brings Arthur an artifact that contains most of Arthur's heart, but Arthur refuses to take it because he believes he can never go back to being normal again and doesn't want his heart to fall into Loki's hands. Arthur tells Santa that he will protect the world Santa brings happiness to and sends Santa back to the living world. Santa is sad that Arthur has made his choice, while Loki laughs at Santa's attempt. He tells Arthur that he does not need a heart as he is already a puppet of his. The spirit of the key urges the children to go beyond the gate so that they can change everything, but the children still hesitate. The spirit continues to speak encouragingly to the children while the divine gate transforms, giving off a bright light that covers the whole area. Akani decides to move forward and worry about the consequences later. Midori and Aoto join him, and they take a step forward. Just then, the gods appear and stop them. The children turn to fight the gods when they notice that the gods are without their drivers. The gods curse Oz for stealing their drivers and the children, who believe that they have the right to decide the fate of the world. The spirit of the key steps forward forward and overwhelms the gods with his powers while questioning them on their hatred for humans. One of the gods says that humans will bring chaos to the world, but the spirit replies that even gods make mistakes. The spirit tells the children not to listen to the gods and that they should choose their fate. Suddenly he transforms into a huge creature and sends the gods away. The spirit then goes to Aoto to remind him of Araton then Akani to remind him how the gods took his father away shortly after meeting him. Midori receives the same, and all three are angered at the gods. The gods refuse to cower and unleash a powerful attack on the children, but the children combine their powers and defend themselves. The spirit then pushes the gods back, making them disappear beyond the gate. The spirit encourages them to go beyond the gate, as there is no one in their way, but then Vice stops them. Genji had come to stop them from changing the world. He scolds them for their intention and says that the World Council uses it to govern the world, telling them that the world would descend into chaos if they went beyond the gate. Midori tries to defend their plan, but Genji does not hear it. He speaks to them from his heart about how he feels about the world, and they start to have a contrite heart. The spirit of the key explains what they would be doing if they remake the world and what it would turn out to be. Midori asks if her wish would prevent Akani and Ioto from getting theirs, and he answers that it would not. They realize that making the wishes would make them gods. Ioto reminds the children of something Arthur said, and the spirit of the key asks that he explain it. Ioto explains that they have to change themselves and not the world. Akane and Midori agree with him. When Ginji sees that they will not be advancing beyond the gate, he reminds them that the World Council will be on the lookout for them for their rebellion before walking away. The children turn towards the spirit of the key and tell him that they will not be changing the world for their selfish reasons anymore. He replies that it is too bad, but it is okay as they changed their fates all the same. Aoto thanks the spirit for everything he has helped him with, and the spirit is shocked that somebody thanked him for the first time, then disappears. The divine gate disappears with the spirit, and Loki teases the children out of the darkness. They dare him to show his face, and he does, with Arthur in tow. They ask him his motive for doing everything he did, and he responds that he loves the struggles of humans. He tells them that Arthur is the chosen one and makes Arthur attack them. So Arthur destroys the tower, and the children run to safety. In Arthur's consciousness, he tells Loki that Loki cannot take away hope from the world, and Loki reminds him that despair lies just beyond hope. They smile as they both hope to win. The children, along with their advisors, escape the destruction of the tower in the zone, while the World Council announces to the people that the path to the Divine Gate has been destroyed. The children see that Lancelot survived and are happy, and then he tells them that none of the Knights of the Round died, as they were saved by the Greater Powers. He also tells them that the Knights are going to get Arthur back. Just then, a door opens out of the zone and the children walk out of it into falling rain in the normal world. 